Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack.
Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Loaded to the gills! Fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen.
Five seconds remaining. NIPs turn to ban. Virtus Pros turn to ban. More important. <laughs> Well, here we are, draft underway. NIPs Major's Prophet being banned out ban. as well, or Lycan out of there. Virtus Pro removing that tempo hero straight off the bat. And you mentioned the techies for Zayats. We're not going to be able to see them in this game. Sadly. I, I want to see techies from time to time. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to see this hero being played all the time. I see it a lot in my pubs. I'm kind of sick of it. You've had enough. But yeah, Shadow Demon also being removed. Um, by Virtus Pro themselves, that's a hero that they've opened quite consistently when, uh, you know, they don't have that Nature's Prophet or even with the Nature's Prophet. So now we're looking towards heroes, I think, like Wyvern, uh, Phoenix, uh, Ninjas in Pajamas love grabbing Virtus those up in the early stages. As support heroes, you know, you've still got Earthshaker, Enchantress, Grimstroke out there. Um, Rubik is probably the, the, the big one along with the two big birds, the Wyvern and Phoenix, probably going to be contested. NIPs turn to Mutus ban. Mutus pros turn to ban. Also, Charlie looks extremely comfortable playing Lycan, one of the reasons why Virtus Pro decided to ban. Does. Ten seconds. Final ban for VP. There are tons of options. Five seconds remaining. You, you may even think about, you know, with the fact that... Okay, they, they ban Oracle. I was wondering there with Mars, Centaur being banned, maybe Axe was going to be a worthwhile take away to stop Sableye from getting another one of his signature heroes. But Earthshaker still left in the pool. They could go for that Enchantress. They can go for Grimstroke, whatever they want, really. Earthshaker as an opener just feels so strong. You're not revealing anything. It's going to be your position for good at every stage of the game choosing where you want to take a fight you don't need items except the blink dagger oh ember spirit he was not banned out man we're in for a treat fire lineup coming out from vertus pro orange and red fire here we come nip Amber and phoenix yeah they picked and granny NIP against phoenix to kill the egg but they go with weaver very nice and still flexible, right? Virtus Could have this. Pros you know, Era has played it, I think, most consistently for NIP as that position four. But with an Earthshaker there, it makes it a little bit more awkward. Pop this into a support role, but it could still be your three. Sableye more than happy to grab that up for themselves. And I was wondering about VP banning Axe. NIP are the ones that remove three offlane heroes in a row. So Resolution's hero pool is really limited now, Ten as they need these initiation heroes to play with Phoenix. Five what do you get? Like, there's no Centaur, there's no Axe, Mars, Nature's Prophet. And if you're able to, you know, build your draft to deal with Timber and Bristleback, that means there are, you know, there's Tidehunter, but we don't see Dragonite. Okay, Dragonite's not banned out. True, true. Okay, good instant stun against the Weaver as well. Oh, Enigma. And there's, there's still Enigma out there. So Weaver will deal well with Phoenix. They could use one more hero to be able to lock down Ember Spirit. I think Earthshaker is just not enough. It could, there is a possibility to go position 5, 3, 4 is kind of guaranteed for Earthshaker here. Ah, Disruptor is one hero that comes to my mind. Great against Ember Spirit, great against Phoenix. What about like a Winter Wyvern? Seneco is really good. On, I'm just thinking of like Winter Wyvern, uh, sorry, Seneco heroes, honestly. Gives you a pretty good disengage. It's immediate catch onto Ember Spirit, sets up for potential Echo Slams. Virtus pros, turn IPs, turn to pick. Out goes the Grim. Oh, that, that's a nice answer. You 
steal the fisher or you steal anything from Weaver and then you can set things up easily. Just ganking the side lanes, setting things up from the invis. It's gonna be very, very good. Ten seconds remaining. It does move Phoenix oh. into the five then. Five seconds remaining. You usually see that Rubik as the four. IP. Cottle, Oracle, Grimstroke, Band. When you mention the grammar in the first phase, do you still want to see that? I, I don't think it's that great here. It deals well with a level 1 Phoenix Egg. But once Phoenix gets to level 12, it's... not the best. I would love to see some more control coming out from their position 5. Or how about the ability to like move across the map? Now get yourself a Chen, there's still Beastmaster available for you, right? Yeah. But I guess there's no Lycan to actually round out that kind of pushing draft. Still Beastmaster gives you a ton of push potential, opens Jesus up the Roche. Christ. With the Necro you're getting rid of the Vision and uh, there's Beastmaster. Go Beastmaster. I guess that's the safer option, going Beastmaster now. And then you give your you, know, you give your draft a bit of an opening to go like Chen Luna as you shift into the, the later two picks. And you've got the time to wait to see what VP grab up now. For it, you know, not the best tri lane hero. So if you do force a tri lane here as ninjas in pajamas, you could Five seconds remaining. cause some issues for VP. Beastmaster also, you know, potentially answering that Enigma Black Hole. Got that Primal Rule ready now. Try and, uh, if, if the BKB does come up for the Enigma, to actually cancel out the Black Hole in teamfights. Beastmaster can struggle a little bit in lane against Rubik, depending who that lane partner is. Fade Bolt, the ability to take down Boars early on can make Beastmaster suffer. NIP's turn to pick. Dragon Knight. Yeah, here comes Dragon Knight. We did not have many options left for the offlaner. It's a strong offlane. You don't. It still depends whether you want to shift this Weaver to position 5 or you want to play it as a core. 10 seconds remaining. Plus 5, was it always going to fly, right? I was gonna fly and someone else played it. We've been casting Dota for too long, Gary. We've seen everything by now. So none of these are building Spirit Vessel. Also, you're... Huh. Just thinking if you have enough lockdown for Ember Spirit. The Beastmaster Earthshaker, it should be alright. Got a decent amount of chain stuns there. Maybe like a little bit more, or at least the ability to nuke him down. Virtus Queen of Pain, still available in the pool. Bristleback. <laughs> That's some early tempo and a very tanky hero that, you know, Virtus Pro with all this damage over time and kind of chipping away at people. Struggle to deal with Bristleback. And you know that Phoenix is five, so that spirit vessel is going to be pretty slow if it comes out at all. Yeah, you will have ways of dispelling it by the time he gets it. I'm just thinking if it's gonna be a bristleback on mid or a safe lane. So everything's still opened up for NIP. NIP's turn yes, you do. There's all kind of noises coming in. The birds are chirping, Lacoste. <laughs> it's a <laughs> nice caught, noise. Got caught a little bit off guard going live so quickly. Meepo, last ban by Virtus Pro, not wanting to get cheesed. Oh, what about the Brood Mother, man? I don't think you want to go uh... for Brood here against the Dragonite, Rubik, Ember Spirit. Ten These spiders are going to die, and Dragonite can just sustain in the lane against Brood. Five seconds remaining. They picked Brood Mother twice yesterday, right? They did. Yeah, they did. One loss and then one really solid win. 
Last ban, you're not sure, you know, Dragonite could be no one's hero, could be the offlane for resolution, Ember Spirit's still flexible, like both cores here, able to go across in multiple lanes and rolls. Invertus Pro have a bit of tower damage from DK, they've got Chain Stun from Phoenix, Rub sorry, Rubik and DK and Ember with the Searing Chains, a bit of team fight from Phoenix. NIP's turn to pick. Banning up the Necro, so removing one of the heroes that deals with Bristleback. That rounds it all out. Let's see what's it gonna be. If that's gonna be position one Weaver or position five. Yeah, it feels like Era Earthshaker, Sableye Beastmaster are kind of locked Ten in there. Remaining. Queen of Pain, surprisingly, is still in the pool, uncontested. Yeah, I thought she was going to come out in that Bristleback position. That's why I mentioned her after the Beastmaster. was like, hey, Queen of Pain is there. Both teams ignoring her for now. 15 seconds he has to make this final decision. So scary when Virtus Pro have that final pick with the flexibility of their draft to get the lane matchups they Virtus want. Virtus Pro's turn to pick. More so flame. it will be Weaver position 5. Yeah, they see Phoenix is a support hard one. So Spirit Vessel is not going to come anytime soon, but they might switch. Okay, so they have Ember Spirit. Never mind, I'm dumb. Ember Spirit just goes for that item no matter what. So you will have it against Bristle and Ten Morph. Seconds, and Phoenix can get something else. Just good luck by, by a Brace or I don't know, by Five whatever. Seconds, Tranquil's Wand. Virtus Pro, last pick. What is your answer to this? Bristleback, Beastmaster, some really tanky, sustainable heroes. Any kind of mana burn have... hero comes to my mind. Phantom Lancer, Slark, even though you're playing into Earthshaker, Storms. but no one Storm. Gonna try and look for that backline stabbing ability with the Storm Spirit. The resolution will be grabbing the Dragon Knight. Virtus Pro, handing things out with two spirits, front and end. ILTW Ember, no one storm. Ninjas in pajamas, they love doing this, don't they? Waiting until the very last second to pick all their heroes. I believe someone played Bristleback as position five. I, I think it was Liquid, Insania played it. Really? Yeah, it, I just did remember a game. It, it did not. <laughs> I mean, I remember when Solo was uh, playing position 5 Brewmaster back in the day. Ten seconds remain. Solo is the one playing Rubik. Usually it is exclusively position 4s playing Rubik. So Saberlight Beastmaster, Charlie on a Bristleback, Supreme will be Morphling. I don't think they're swapping okay. lanes on NIP side, so they're just always playing Supreme mid, Charlie on the safe lane. And they do. Seneco on this Weaver, you know, could start off Blightstone and with Nasal Goo and uh, Quill Spray. A lot of damage that you have to deal with. See how they actually set things up, though. Uh, Virtus Pro have some very solid dual lanes themselves. Rubik Ember, lots of catch. Phoenix with Dragon Knight, lots of damage over time from the Phoenix, but also that sustain from Sunray. I love when you've got Phoenix and DK together and you just put DK onto a tower and sunray him to make sure that if he gets jumped, he's going to be healed pretty much back up to full regardless of what happens. Rubik and Dragonite are so strong together. Fate Bolt and Breathe Fire. 70-80% of your damage is gone, the physical one. Well, away we go. Game one of this best of three here. Ninjas in pajamas taking on Virtus Pro. We get ourselves into the first game of the series and into a pause. And Lacoste, I'm going to quickly go and close my door. Well, so a quick pause. No one on the Storm Spirit. We've already seen what, what this man can do. He also had to leave the pub that he was playing. Definitely didn't expect Alliance versus Liquid to only be two games. Kind of feel bad just for him. Been, just what I've been waiting for. Yeah, leaving pub is always the worst feeling. Oh. 
pretty common thing now, it feels like. We're getting pauses for lags in most games. So how do we start out with items over on NIP? Weaver doesn't go for the Blight Stone, goes for tons of regen and uh, an early sentry ward. Aiko going to be that position 5 Weaver. Supreme on the Morphling. Heading into mid, just like you said, so it should be Charlie safely in Bristle. Sable Light, that Beastmaster, and Era Boots first, Earthshaker. Down to bottom lane. On Virtus Pro, we've got ourselves no one storm. Always a real sight to behold. Rubik there for solo. Zayat's playing that ILTW Ember. Resolution. Amount of Balance chase potential here that VP things. has. If they even so much as catch a glimpse of even the Weaver or the Earthshaker, they can jump on them and blow them up. Virus Pro I... have a very nice way of defending the egg. Lift, have Storm Spirit's pull, Dragonite stun, chains. So LTW will be the one playing it. Ember Spirit on the safe lane already has Urn queued up, so I'm wondering what Zayat is going to build. I mean, you can always get Veil of Discord. <laughs> Who is this? Suneko. What, what are these drawings on the map? He's drawing sunshine. Rays of pink sunshine coming out of the dire base. How does he do that? I mean, there are there are macros that you can have to draw on the map. Really? But there's also like yeah, if there's also like settings in your like Logitech or Steel Series, whatever, like mouse application where you can change the way that the mouse moves, so it like snaps to like straight line positions. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can notice the difference. Coloring, <laughs> Coloring lessons. Lacoste and Gary. There we go. Finally out of the pause so we can stop Bob Rossing. All over the minimap. Told you a yeah, Lacoste, I'll draw a cat for you. You're what very good, you Gary. Learn? What did you learn? Ah, quickly, you but not quickly fast get enough. The before it fades off. No. Lost my touch. I'm not quick enough. Charlie, but they have fun. And I'll see them. With a good luck. Oh, and Sableite with a good luck, 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 luck. Versus Pro Nida. Sableite starting with Orb of Venom. So that means they want to keep the pressure going. Him and Sona Eco, a lot of overtime damage. You get the Swarm on Weaver. This bottom lane should go. Well, for NIP. 30 seconds to battle. Solo wandering over. Does he get this D ward straight away? He does. You blew no it. way. Just what I've been waiting for. I almost feel bad. I almost feel bad. Out better. goes the observer ward. Vision removed. And they have double wards mid to try and protect Supreme. Still has the one up towards the top rune spot for the Morphling. Sableite coming into the jungle with Seneko. The battle is down solo. Pick just fine. I'm a D ward now from Seneko. So both teams losing out on a little bit of vision around that mid lane. No Storm's playing without vision at all. Up top, Weaver plus Bristleback. You've got the mid lane Storm against Morphling. Wave up on Supreme's ramp, though. A little bit more awkward here for no one. Bottom lane, ILTW. Bloody body blocking up his wave. Double balls are there from Sableite playing the left hand side. And that's going to be the focus of Virtus Pro. Series chains, even. Just Level to kill Morris. That's how important it is, right? Level 1 boar is not that strong, it's just being annoying, it doesn't really deal damage. 16 damage after reductions, it's uh, not the greatest. And looking up towards top lane, Seneco and Charlie are expending a decent amount of mana themselves, have put Resolution and Zayas around half HP. That pressure applied, the forward, but down bottom. Solo being fissured up, Sable here with the boar slow, he does telekinesis up 
Beastmaster, so it's up to Ira now to try and chase this one down. I don't think he'll be able to get this kill. Solo will get close enough to his tower just fine. How's mid lane doing? 6-4 against 5-4 on Morphling. I've seen no one destroying matchups that I did not think it's possible. I don't think you get a kill on Morphling here. It's very hard because of the attribute shift, but I expect him to get more farm. Yeah, especially when Supreme, you know, hits level three like he has done now. I'm expecting Supreme to go for an earlier magic stick, but he's opting for the Wraith Band. To finish that one off first. So with plenty of regen. Era trying to make life living hell here for Solo and a great wave track. Say for like, gonna try and deny That's out a nice block. And also with a Fisher block, Solo has to telekinesis back the Beastmaster. Oh, you pretty far forward with his level two flame guard, playing aggressively with the searing chains. They're expending a lot of their resources, just trying they to deal with the aggression. NIP can't remove his flame guard. Fisher ready. Where's another oh, hit? Flow. Oh, but the Ooh, Fade Bolt. They, they needed two extra hits because Fade Bolt just connected. Also, there's no healing cells, which means that LTW will be playing on low HP. They need to use the courier. Both very low. And it's the same across all these lanes. You know, NIP probably wishing they had a Bloodseeker or something in the mid lane. Zayat's and Resolution continually harassed. Zaneko will now use his opportunity to pull that wave back. So you reckon mid lane is probably just going to be a farm trade? Pretty dead even there. Both these side lanes, though, most certainly. With this aggression and kill threat. Good start from both teams. No first blood four minutes in. Top Mid lane. lane. Change that though, it looks like. Uh, Zayat's being hounded. Suneko does grab it up. All I've got to do is whine, you know, complain about no first blood, and there it is. The teams, they give it to us. No one was left with 30 HP. Now they will secure the rune. Era does not want to pick it up. So Morphling will grab it. I mean, no one is fine. He's back to two-thirds of his HP, can farm the jungle. Earthshaker is scouting him out. I'm wondering if no one notices that he's not getting XP. He's gonna notice, surely. Walk back up to try and find another little camp here. He's burnt through all of his mana. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Problems for Virtus Pro. No one's gonna have to walk back to base. Seneco being chased up top. 15 seconds until the bounty runes come. That's what Weaver is really aiming towards now. No way for Virtus Pro to get any of the bottom ones here. Beastmaster and Earthshaker kind of zoning them out. And Seneco, he's going to go deeper. Oh, grab up what should be the third bounty rune for NIP. Supreme was ready to deny it with the illusion. Imagine if you could pick up bounty runes with the illusions. Yeah, that would be OP. Shut up, that. Lacoste. <laughs> that is not something we need. Solo. Dived under his tier 1 with a boar slow. He's already popped all of his spells here. It looks like NIP will get the final touch with the boars. And now they focus in towards LTW, getting the Beastmaster out of danger. And another fish of red in 4 seconds. Table light is just fine and dandy to walk away from the lane for a little bit. You got headdress, no salve or anything. Going straight into Helm of the Dominator on Beastmaster. You are most gracious. Half of the wave into the creep camp. And his bottom rune, Era ready here with a fisher and no one. He is level six. Ball lightning there and gets the double damage rune. Ball lightning away. A lot of mana expended just to grab the rune though. Mine! Morphling can just keep farming aggressively. If you look at his build, that means I don't care. I see what I'm playing against. There's no real burst damage. I'm not gonna die. Didn't even get a single point in waveform. 
Seneko's Weaver really chasing Zayats, forced him all the way from top lane through mid, had to dive across the little chasm there to get away from danger. But here comes Storm Spirit's first rotation, TP bottom and look for Sabrelight. The ball landing in will easily clear up the kill, and a ball take on Twerchik and might get them a bonus one. No way out for Era. And there's no one with that double damage rune bottled up. In short work of that dire side, and they're going to refill the bottle as well. ILTW two Rebels bottles refilled. Bottle. Value that you get from that 90 gold TP is insane. ILTW tips no one. I think it should be the other way around. <laughs> it definitely should be. Zayas does have the dive mid lane to get out of the reach of Seneko and Supreme. Now, if you did have that waveform point, maybe you get the kill on the Phoenix there. O1 DD expiring, coming back in to reclaim his lane. They do see a, a very even game here in terms of farm for all the core heroes. Morphling at 41-14. Yes, he's beating out the storm by a, a decent amount, but you've still got this DK and Ember Spirit having a pretty great time. DK not too bothered about Charlie Bristleback. He's got tons of armor to deal with the Quill Spray. Plenty of HP regen as well. Left in a straight 1v1. I don't think you get this kill. Seiko is very tanky. No one is just too fast. He's getting all the runes by fast clicking. So Neiko, magic wand, infused raindrops, and the bracer on your position five weaver. Way tankier than you this. No one back into the jungle. Finish off the treads. Gives a lot of room now for Supreme in that mid spot. Bottom lane is the Radiant's middle tower area where everyone's tower. converging. Radiant's Rubik's out of there, he doesn't want to stick around. My LTW is going to Remnant. Be back to base, refill the bottle. But Rubik given space to try and get level 6 and maybe even some boots up. Uh, sorry, finishes off his wand. Level 6. They kill the Morphling. No. It's just a straight up no. There's a lot of heroes who are unkillable at the moment. Like, you don't kill Dragonite, you don't kill Bristleback, who's going for Hood. They're just way too tanky. And both of these teams don't have a real burst damage. You need to bring at least three heroes to score a kill on, on one of those. Feel comfortable for Virtus Pro right now. Just look at Seneko the way he's playing. Just shikuching in, scouting. He gets vision of a couple of heroes. Doing a little bit of chip damage here and there. Also able to keep tabs on the jungle, making sure there are no stacks being built up. Zayat making his home down south with the Ember Spirit now. Golden Shikuchi from Solo. The difference in levels starting to become a little bit apparent as they do cash out Sineko. Finally, he's going to pay for all of this irritating maneuvers he's been playing. It will be three Radiant for Radiant one bounties. Resolution, just silently farming on the top lane. Bracer, Magic Wand, Sol Ring, Power Treads going into Blink Dagger. They really don't have ways of killing him. And he has Iron Talon, which means that his juggling is going to be much, much better. Looks like NIP are really getting into the timing that they wanted though. Beastmaster has his item coming out on Guria. So that's Helm of the Dominator with a catapult wave beautifully synchronized up by Saberlight. Virtus Pro are trying to handle it though. In they go with Solo and ILTW. He's thinking about the turn and the roar, but Saberlight is surely gonna drop. Lifted back into the flame guard. Radiance top tower. Ports out from NIP, still level four. Not able to get down there and defend their Beastmaster. Not having level 6 on Earthshaker here doesn't really matter. I mean, having Echo Slam is much, much better to have than not have. Wow. But, uh, you know, he's still about the Fisher setup. Oh. Radiance middle tower Phoenix. Trying to dive in for that. Uh, sorry, the Morphling trying to dive in for that Phoenix in Phoenix mode. Double Phoenix. 
They get the tier one regardless. Radiant structures are fortified. Charlie still just left alone to farm top lane. Virtus Pro now coming bottom. They want a second kill on the Beastmaster. A remnant forward not going to be committed upon by RTW. They've got the roar on Dragon Knight, and Charlie now TP's in to react. The storm ball heading towards Beastmaster in the back, and no one finds the pick off he needed. The stuns, they are connecting on resolution, and yes, he's dropping lower and lower, but they need this Morphin with the adaptive strike and the final killing blow. Storm still with a lot of mana to go here as we're slow to fit, bouncing around on NIP, chasing towards RTW, but he's got remnants and one charges to play around with, and he's just doing so much chip damage. Another Fisher will connect, but Solo, Shikuchi into the back, looking for a bit more damage, but he's been isolated now. Adaptive strike, oh, man, but a double, double kill from RTW. With the slight chains, he gets the takedown, and Virtus just pro that in and out fight beautifully done it's gonna be such a great timing on that spirit vessel from iltw four zero and three you can see the power of dragonite there they needed four heroes to actually grab a kill Man, zayats gets solo kill on supreme what yeah supreme was moving back to his tier two mid lane and zayats is just like oh cool I've, he I've, I've did got, not use any spells. Did he morph everything into Aju sitting at 1% of HP? Top tower is under Nothing was on cooldown when I checked. Interesting. Supreme just dropping. 9 to 3 now. And a very quiet opening to the game, but Virtus Pro using these two spirits to uh, great success. Dodge in and out of team fights. Now, no one looking at a Kaya 13 minutes in. Spirit Vassal, you mentioned it. Done. Completed for LTW. And that's going to give them so much more tempo here. He has two charges in it. Tier one's still alive. It's a problem. There's the jump. Fisher. Trying to block back Virtus Pro. Zayas has already fallen. Guys, they stand me. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. Just dives in. Beastmaster has a roar on half HP. Wants to play aggressively. So what's the Bristleback's goal now? He's got Hood, Soul Ring, working on treads. Does NIP start to get that five-man death ball going? They're diving Sable at bottom lane, never mind. They're just looking for pickoffs. Virtus Pro just never giving up. Relentless aggression. So we're trying to pressure this tower. Seneca just finally gets a rune to steal it away from no one, but the ball lightning forward. No one giving chase as the bottom tower being dived again. That will secure it for VP. The Spirit Vessel is doing so much work. Amplifies the killing potential of the Ember Spirit. And very limited catch. If they use Roar on one of the supports, Ember Spirit can do whatever he wants in a team fight. Earthshaker just hit level 6. They know where Supreme's heading. Straight into mid lane with a blink dragon tail. Resolution gets the catch. Supreme annihilated by that level 2 Sunray. And no one. He gets the ball lightning in to finish off the kill. And with his dragon form still going for a couple of seconds, VP are going to find another objective on the map. Timing from Virtus Pro comes online much faster. They got the kill on Beastmaster twice and messed up with their time as you talked about. Beastmaster, very nicely done. Come of the Dominator plus a catapult. He's gonna push tier one tower, but it never happened. 15 minutes in, tier one tower on the bottom still standing, which is a very rare thing to see when there's a Beastmaster on that lane. Yeah, and then they, they picked him off again before that group up actually came to fruition. And they are sticking around mid lane. Dragonite showing on the wave. Solo with ILTW into this dire triangle. under attack. Things come out onto the Rubik, but chasing him down is still pretty difficult. Wind lanes and Frankel boots. He's got tons of move speed. Well, he told you gets a spirit that's long to bristle back. UK thinking about the blink stun here, but I don't know if they want to focus bristle or go for the second target. The Dragon Knight jumps the Beastmaster. Sableye is the kill. Oh, oh I played. Beautifully done by BG, just baiting this fight. The Fisher is nice as they do catch up RTW, but he's got a remnant back, and now they just keep on going. The Bristle back. Supernova is uh, burning down as the Storm Spirit finishes off Suneko, chasing forward onto the Morphling now as a Searing Chains from Supreme did hold a couple in place, but he's been left alone. Nowhere to go. Virtus Pro with a double kill on no one, and yet again, this execution in team fights from VP just outclassing NIP. What a play from LTW. He was baiting the roar using Remnant Slight and Beastmaster never got it off. 
just buying time. Rest of the team was there, ready to back him up. Man, Stormtrooper is just a thousand gold away from full Bloodstone. So close to it. Look at where VP are playing now. Immediately straight back onto Sable. He's two, five, and one, and it's about to be a sick death for him. Solo, he's got the steal on the raw. Pops on the Sable, I finish off the beast map with a slide of fist. And Seneko, he's trying here his hardest to deal with that Rubik. But Charlie, he's been jumped by the Storm Spirit. They turn and focus, bring him down. The bristle's gone. Seneko, he wants just a kill. One kill, please, sir. Can I have some more? He's going to time that's back. Weep is trying to get out of there, but in we go. The second round of fighting from VP as they do catch out this Weaver. No time lapse remaining. The remnant ready for RTW, but the Weaver shifts down southeast to hide in the trees. Ferris Pro is playing extremely fast right now. Dragonite will have another ulti ready in uh, 10 seconds. Bristleback, you don't feel the snowball potential coming up from this hero in the game. Morphling, they also shut him down nicely. It's hard for Morph. You know, Ember Spirit had 12 minute Spirit Vessel. Good luck against that. There's no one that can dispel it. You also don't want to buy Manta style. You already committed getting a Ghost Scepter. A uh, shaker. The long ball lining from no one's finding era. He's 700 gold off blink now, make that 800. A monster kill streak for this 805 storm. VP snowballing heavily. Mango tree in the base, allowing them to keep the pressure. No one doesn't need to go back to base. And they also refilled twice his bottle just by Ember Spirit leaping back. So he's almost full mana all the time. Yeah, and just keeps that aggression going. Morphling, you're saying he's struggling. Still about a thousand gold away from that E-Blade rush. But NIP unable to cross the river. They haven't been able to make any moves of their own. They're just constantly reacting to this VP aggression. Another tower falling. Resolution clearing that one up. 40 seconds until Dragon Form, and he's got himself a Shadow Blade on top of Blink Dagger. Mid lane. LTW might still go for him. Thinking about it, Supreme does get that morph shift into Ember Spirit mode as NIP make the play bottom, killing Zayat and finally the tier 1 tower. Zayat had to adjust his item build, no spirit vessel, Ember is the one getting it, but he has a max Philosopher's Stone, so that's gonna be like an extra half an item in the next 10 minutes coming out just from Philosopher's Stone. Dyer's top tower is Outposts under attack. in 30 seconds. Radiant's bottom top lane belongs to Radiant. NIP did grab the southern one. And it looks like VP wants to steal that one back, though. Solo makes his way across there, and nobody from NIP going to be contesting this. Charlie tries to trade out for the northwest outpost. A little bit of space now for NIP. Supreme closing in on that E-Blade. But Virtus Pro have a Shadow Bladed Dragon Knight leading the charge, looking for anyone farming Triangle. Nobody here. Saberlight shoving out bottom with all of his little summons. That's for me. Resolution cutting wave down bottom as well, trying to mitigate the push from Saberlight. How's Resolution the most farmed hero in the game? I guess Iron Talon helps out. Yeah, he's, he's 2 1 and 8. Storm is 8 0 5, and somehow Rezo. Top net worth. And I'd be going to struggle to max that DK. Charlie Bristleback. What's he got? Hood. Working on a Lotus Orb. Hasn't really had the impact he wanted from this early tempo hero in the Bristle. Bottom lane, long zip in. A ball lightning trying to catch out Sableite. It's RTW and no one. Yet again, the two Spirit Bros pairing up beautifully as they get straight back toward mid lane. Charlie, Spirit Vessel on him and Revolution here with a Dragon Tail stun, catching out the Bristle. The Sunray just melting him. It's barbecue season, Lacoste. 
Yes, it is. Percentage-based damage on top of Spirit Vessel. ILTW, he's not done. He's got some sticky Sunray ribs. And Supreme being dived again for the ball lightning in. No one and ILTW going a little too far this time, though. Is that Blade Gecko from here? No follow-up. Follow-through not available. The E-Blade does tick down the Ember, but he's got the heal of the Wand of the Sunray. And Virtus Pro. So aggressive, but executing wonderfully. It's an opportunity for Earthshaker where you see... Oh man, I'm gonna land up two, three men. Echo Slam. But if no one from your team is there, like, you can't just solo kill him. It was on two heroes without a creep wave. Radiance top tower has been denied. IP hiding in their base now. It is smoke time. Radiant Ryan. Bait with this bristle back. DP show the storm top lane for a second. A DD rune for LTW. Maelstrom completed for him. Tons more damage output. He, he wanted to go for Radiant straight, but decided. I need Solo. something else right now, some extra bit of damage. Solo in trouble. Zip! Oh, that's an HP, and they're gonna catch with the chains. The roll turns back on the stones right now. The resolution's in, but Supreme down. The damage around IP is lacking. The chase is on. Virtus Pro, they can clean up house here if they can only grab a couple of targets. Another remnant slide chains again. Oh, he doesn't just permanently chain stunning these NIP heroes. Charlie has nowhere to run. A Fisher will try and buy him time, but Storm Sprint is there beyond godlike. And Era, the dragon. Dragon form, but no blink stun. Era blinks away. But yet again, it's NIP trying to come He's out of their base with a smoke move. Oh, God. They're going in deep. Holy shit, they're diving tier fours. Lacoste, they've got the Earthshaker. Real Virtus Pro Dotka. Man, LTW, I was not impressed by his performance in some of the games over the last few days, but he really delivered in this one. Both him and no one, zero deaths. What did you learn? 12k lead. More flip TPing top. Supreme Dyer's uses way top tower is under attack. Seems like VP not feeling like they're in a position to go jump on him. This just hasn't been a game for ninjas in pajamas. Rezo finishes off his silver edge. Just needs to pop off to the shop. Even with Shadow Blade, he still has enough mana sustain. Mango Tree providing him, bringing clarities, Soul Ring. He even skipped the level 10 talent, went for the level 25, oh, sorry, level 15. And now he goes back to level 10 talent. Breathe Fire damage reduction, 49% on top of Rubik's Fade Bolt, which is minus 35 per hero not uh, not too bad what did you learn what pretty much you all your damage gone nip smoke past the roche pit holding the radiant high ground and they are behind vp don't catch a glimpse of a single radiant hero virtus pro equally as smoked a roshan attempt from nip this is a sneaky one but it's being pinged out. Did they see the swarm? They, they saw something. VP know this is happening. Now the spam ping has come. Hey guys, they're in the Roche pit. He is dropping very quickly to that minus off. And he comes with the blink dragon does stun. Who did he catch into the boar? The blink echo is only on the DK and the rest of VP now have an open team fight. Save life being obliterated by the storm. Beyond God like continuation of the dragon tail onto the back again with the spirit vessel and down he goes. And IP being shredded as Morphling did get the Aegis, but that's his first life gone and a supernova from Zayat is gonna try and secure the timing with the chain stuns, landing perfectly, morphling has gone, and that's gotta be game. I would not be surprised if they just called it out here. Bounty rune spawned, they got the Aegis, didn't get anything out of that. Once again, Echo Slam just hits one hero, and that's Dragonite. He actually heals during that time instead of receiving damage. Dyer's middle tower is Remember, that was also your first pick, Earthshaker. It, it was, absolutely. And Virtus Pro onto the tier 3 with Catapult Wave. Level 3 Dragon Form. Oh my goodness. Storm and Solo. They've managed to find the Weaver as Seneca is trying to cut waves up top lane. But they're losing their mid barracks. 
Clumsy now from the Beast Mouth with the dust off the DK, but the Bristleback turned upon. Half HP with that Silk Red and Spirit Vessel. Charlie Lotus Orbs and Essence Rings back. Still going to be damage for this mid lane of active though as the rest of Virtus Pro arriving now. The ball lining in from Storm, zipping towards the Beast Master with a great vortex grab. They're taking down two key kills, the Supreme Sun stunned, and down he goes. That's it. I mean, you have to call it here. Nothing you'll learn from this game. <laughs> can't really make a comeback from this one 16k gold lead 26 minutes in your storm spirit and ember spirit are doing everything you can't show on the lane like there's no counterplay to this anymore oh i'm gonna split push you can just farm whatever comes to your tier 3 tower and that's it no one. sad part is you don't have a tier 3 tower anymore And whoever no one sees, he's gonna kill one that orchid. P don't have any wave coming in bottom lane. Yeah, Storm TP's down there to keep his on coming. So they're able to cut the wave with Zayats, so it should be able to connect onto the tier two and maybe another high ground and push for VP coming. The only one who's outside the base is Soneiko. Usually that item is a game changer. Scanning. She gets Aghanim Scepter. In this game it would not really matter. I feel like a telescope. Give that over to Rubik. Fake Let's hype it one more app. time, Gary. Let's go. <laughs> Rubik telescope! Top tower is under He's attack. got Fisher already stolen. Where's Storm going? No one just cutting through trees. Is anybody sneaking around here? Probably not. NIP holding on potentially for you know one last fight. Be their last chance. Because at 31 to 8, Virtus Pro are coming for your buildings. I can form up for resolution. Smoke, NIP, trying to keep the beast master and earthship hit him. They focus the bristle back and look at the way the sun ray just destroys him. They've caught the beast master silence, so no roar. Fisher will catch no one for a second, but Charlie's down with no buyback. And NIP bleeding out, crumbling one by one. Over here! My eternal <laughs> They can jump this beast master again. I think that's what no one's looking for. You see the axes come out. There's the jump from the remnanting ember spirit. Dive into the storm. Finding Earthshaker to no blink. Echo slam. Arrow's gone. And so's the Morphling. Catching the beast master in the back as the Weaver takes off immediately. It is just a devastating blow to NIP. And that's when the GG's come. What a performance from British Pro. It really did not feel like they're contested at all. Two spirits without a single death to their name. L2W really stepped it up.
NIPs turn to ban. Across. NIP have to put that one behind them. You know, figure out what went wrong. Uh, try and group up together maybe a little bit tighter and faster because VP, look, I mean, look how quickly they're banning. Like, this is how quickly VP are playing. Just like, oh, you banned a hero? Here's another one. Here's another one. Let's go. NIP also doing the same thing. Like, someone's gonna mess up. There's still Ember Spirit in the pool. NIP. Got the first pick. That hero is really worth a first phase it. What he did and uh, what he usually does. Like having the earlier Spirit Vessel Carrier, I think it's very, very important to have. Virtus Pros, Let's go. Wow. <laughs> they take the Ember themselves. You also wonder about all the support heroes left in the pool, but, you know, very quickly, solo the position 5 Rubik that game. You know, very often we say Rubik is a position 4, and that's like the only role he really plays. Rubik into Earthshaker Weaver, you know that he's going to have really, you know, high impact Ten spells to steal, and solo made it work beautifully, so well worth a respect ban. Virtus Pro, and I to pick. Monks left in there with a Mars, so they're going to get their combo. Left a lot of offlane heroes in the pool, so Resolution NIP Mars and Phoenix there still adaptable Weaver. from position 4 and 5. And NIP still opting to go for that Weaver. Seems like NIP wants to have Weaver against Phoenix. Have that egg hitter. My, you, you don't know which lane Weaver's gonna go to. So this is their offlane, Mars, Phoenix. For NIP, you don't know where these heroes are going. I want to see some Five extra lockdown. Either stuns, disruptors. One hero that comes to my mind works well, well, very well with Mars. Just a combination and silence against Ember Spirit, Weaver, Glimpse back. Turn to ban. Yeah, Bane there, another good one, solid ban. NIP. So a pretty good team fight combo with you know disruptor Phoenix Mars. Just that trio of heroes from your support and off uh, supports and off laner. Bring you majority of your team fight. And ban for Ten VP. Remaining. They got rid of uh, the Grimstroke Five seconds previous game. Remaining. Pretty solid Grimstroke ban here as well with Ember and Weaver. That Inkswell has a lot of value. Unless they're thinking it. Maybe we want Grimstroke for ourselves. I'm not a big fan of Grimstroke plus another hero that doesn't have a real stun. Spear is not reliable. If you have Axe, then it's a different situation. Okay. Shadow Shaman. I'm loving it. You need some kind of Hex. I was thinking about Lion. But uh, they barely see a Lion. We see a Lion as a response to Naga Siren sometimes being picked up. You kill two illusions and when you need some extra lockdown. Now with those Serpent Wards, you, you really are here as VP, able to choose where you want to fight. You know, whether it's around objectives or in Roshan, Five Arena of Blood with Serpent Wards, and Supernova. Tons of stuff to throw into the fight. Color coordinated lineup coming up from Virtus Pro. Man, I wish they had Amber Spirit. Yeah, the yellow and gold working for them. Clockwork for NIP now. Very good at getting in on top of Phoenix and Shadow Shaman. Try and start the fight, give you that vision so you know where VP are coming from. It's a decent clocker game against Shaman and Phoenix, as you suggested. But Mars can easily spear you out of the cogs. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. You will have to show one of their real core heroes here. Queen of Pain oh. still available against Clockwork, Weaver. Sounds very good. Or, I mean, you can go Storm, Puck, all these three heroes, very elusive. Ninjas in pajamas don't have that much lockdown. Are any of these heroes that can kind of jump out of cogs? I mean, what, what about position one heroes that can get out of there? Like Phantom Lancer? Bad. Phantom Lancer, what else is there? Oh, Phantom Assassin, maybe. 
Lifestealer can rage and try and get himself out. We can go for that, you know, Luna with the Hurricane Pike. Yeah. A lot of tempo around this Shadow Shaman with the Serpent Wards. NIPs turn to pick. Void incarnate. Oh, Void Spirit as well, yeah. He's able to get in and out of fights. I forgot yeah. completely about this hero. Thought he's banned out in the first phase. Now we're looking at NIP who have this you know, limited catch, limited lockdown, relying pretty heavily on Hookshot and you know, Ember Spirit Ten with the Siren Chains. Well, they are still very flexible Five with their heroes, remaining. so they can move these into any positions they wanted, really. You might not need to have like early lockdown for Ember and Weaver, but if Void Spirit gets Aghanim Scepter earlier, you have two charges of two seconds silence against two of these heroes. I still feel that Aghanim Scepter is a bit overpowered. Feel that way. What are we looking at here? Era Clockwork. They might pull out that Seneca Weaver again at position 5. But it's still open for the middle safe lane. I just want to, I want to see Sableite on a hero, you know, like Doom or Axe. I think that's able to get that first item, the Blink Dagger or whatever it may be. You know, Enigma or Beastmaster with that Necro or Helm. Really play around your Sableite offlaner. Oh, Clockwork clock, clock, quite hits the mark in that regard. Earthshaker completely ignored. Left out in the cold. There's the Enigma. That's what they'll be looking for, that first item timing. Play around this Enigma. A lot of circles. Mars, Void Spirit, Enigma. What could they pick that pierces through Enigma's BKB? Ten seconds remaining. I don't I don't think you have that hero. Five seconds remaining. And you, you cannot rely on Supernova to do it, that's for sure. Just precast it. Gas Supernova. That's a that's a difficult question, honestly. They've already got Mars in that off lane, so they can't really pick up, you know, a Beastmaster, for example. Thing is, though, you know, picking Enigma into Phoenix and Shadow Shaman, these heroes in lane can do pretty well dealing with the Eidolons. I suppose they're looking for Charlie's hero. Virtus Pro thinks differently. They feel like it's going to be Ember Spirit. Huh. Why did they ban out yeah. Lina? I'm, I'm not sure, I, but I feel like Ember Spirit with the Spirit Vessel Rush is more of the kind of Charlie tempo hero, and then Supreme, you know, playing that position one from the mid lane, really, with his Morphlings and his Meepos and Ten stuff. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, it's a I'm very sure good Meepo now. game for Five NIP. Remaining. There's still one pick for Virtus Pro, but it looks very, very good for Meepo. Please, turn, turn to pros, turn to pick. They do go for the lifestealer. They have nothing that goes through a rage, not a single ability. And if Enigma gets BKB, it could be a very big problem. We're in a situation, you know, Virtus Pro Ten with his last pick, they've remaining. got that problem to deal with. I don't think too long before picking up the Morphling. So we're gonna go for that raw right-click damage. No one Morphling. He's gonna be leaning up against the Ember Spirit, right? Yes. That's why they picked it. I mean, they could have put LTW on a mid lane. It's a pretty even matchup, Void against Ember. But this way, it's much, much better for Morphling. You really don't care about his harassment. You can't die unless you super overextend, make a mistake. We're talking about, you know, perfect scenarios, but uh, happen. You're making the most of it. Zayat Shadow Shaman. Coming out here to pair up with that Resolution Mars. 
Ten seconds remaining. RP, still thinking about how they want to set this all up. Five seconds What, what are you looking at? Resolution with Zayats. W with Solo. It's going to be... Supreme Ember Spirit, Charlie on the Lifestealer, everything kind of slotting back into place. So they do keep Suneko on that position 5 Weaver. Era Clockwork. P, as long as, long as they can play around Saberlight and make sure that they you know, group up around him when he hits these timings for a pretty decent game. Also, one of the reasons why they picked Morphling, he turns into Lifestealer, you have a free BKB for yourself. There's some also very nice spells to seal if you turn into Weaver, Ember Spirit, Steel. I mean, just turn into him, have chains against him. Oh, and he, Lifestealer could easily pop off in this game. Yeah, he's got a pretty free game. VP are going to be really reliant on that. Again, the trio of heroes they picked up first. Mars, Phoenix, Shadow Shaman. Setting up these team fights and really pieces of NIP. LTW Void Spirit there. And Supreme Ember Spirit. Very ill. Get ourselves into game two here at this best of three. BP 1-0 up, but looking like a very solid draft from the Ninjas in Pajamas. The resolution heading up top on that Mars. Shadow Shaman. No one morphling in towards mid. Shadow Shaman, 75 damage. And when he puts Fairy Fire in, it's going to be 79 per hit. Okay. Balanced. Life Stealer buys a Ring of Protection. That's what his way of dealing with it, I guess. Get a and three Fairy Fires. And keep himself alive through all of those right clicks. It's also extra Get six again. damage. Cure those last hits a little easier. Yet again, Resolution going to grab the outpost. Just please. As I ask. <laughs> Playing pretty far forward, going to scout out Supreme's Ember Spirit. Two early wards coming out here from VP, top and mid. Solo's Phoenix being chased back by Era, NIP taking control of the southern outpost down that little bit of high ground there. Laker telling Saberlight how to play. Begins. Get back there, go deny a creep. It's got to take that into consideration here, of course. Nying out farm experience. This void spread is going to be key. Battery assault from Era. Start things off with some really good harass damage onto Solo, and he's got boots on the clockwork. Coming down below half HP. One tango will do. And you're also sitting next to the tower, so extra region will kick in. Solo needs to be careful about his positioning. Clockwork with boots. You can't just be in the jungle. Try to trade hits. L2W doesn't have anything skilled yet. Goes for Resonant Pulse to deal with these Eidolons. Fiery Spirits used as well by Solo. Pretty good at handling them so far. But Saberlight has another cast coming now. Now that range creep. Now he's got Eidolons back up. Trapped with a sentry, not quite... Sorry, solo with a sentry, not quite catching Era's Observer Ward. Boost, but not quite. You're in over your head. It's like top lane. Neko and Zayat's trading hits. A lot of damage back to each other. Charlie did drop to half HP as well, so resolution kept nice and healthy. He used to farm away like a boss. Zayat's expended a lot of his mana, needs to bring some extra region to this lane. What is he bringing? A clarity, another sentry. Just just want to be able to see Weaver. Spear. Goes into Spear. The right click punches, he pops Rage and Fairy Fire, and Charlie will get away. That no Fairy Fire for either of them, though. Keeping him alive, he's bringing Salve and some extra Tangos. 
if you don't have salve coming up to you it would be a disaster like you would be farming underneath the tower but still there is kill potential coming out from these two heroes they also need to bring this some kind of mana region we know that mars got hit hard spear level four costs 140 mana difficult for him and science gets the d ward on the sentry there the so they're always going to be able to keep tabs on Seneco and also you know magic stick on this shadow charm are going to be getting charges How's the mid lane going? 15-1, 13-1, pretty dead even. No one really bothered about that mid lane. It's going to be a farm trade for the most part. You can't stop Morph from farming in this lane. Also, you don't have ways of removing Ember Spirit shields. So... What is he going for? Morphling going for bottle. Interesting. A bit of a change now that he's playing mid. So he can control the runes for himself. Oh, yeah, yet again, forcing Suneko back. Completely out of mana now on the Shadow Shaman, though. Clarity and stick charges as he tries to contest the pull. Open himself up here, but... Supreme, like you say, there's no way to get rid of this flame guard. No one. Just gonna have to try and see us under tower for the most part. I like what they did on the top lane. Resolution pings it out. You farm these two, three creeps. Since we were pulled the camp, I'm just gonna be the one farming that so they share some gold while Resolution gets the solo experience from that. Yeah, and Rezo's the one contesting the pull across again. Dyer's Down the majority of the creeps there. Under attack. Down a very quiet opening to this game. Either way, where is he? 12 and 14. Having a pretty decent start here. Has his two stages masks, boots and stick coming out for your Enigma. Making a bit of a start here on the Void Spirit. Battery Assault and Malefice. Little ticks of damage over time, but President Paul's keeping RTW perfectly healthy. As top lane, a spear from Resolution forces the Rage from Charlie. Zayat gets the Shackle out, but the Open Wounds have slowed Resolution down. They're trying to get the punches in, but Sinenko focusing the Shadow Shaman. A good little God's Rebuke back, but First Blood spill. He had four stick charges, but you still would die there. So Sonaiko opening it up. Completely different game than game number one. Well, the 1 1 1 build, that's a lot of mana that Sonaiko needs to have. I shall reconsider your work. Dissimilates away from danger. Table Light was getting closer there. He didn't have mana for the Malefice, so never mind. Just Era putting on that pressure. Charlie raging again. Sounds like a bottles. Charlie raging again. Not feeding down mid though. Trying his hardest to not feed top lane. That is Charlotte's causing problems for them. <laughs> Bounty runes for Supreme. Radiance bottom tower. Morphling's bottle empty, trying to clear out that mid wave. Two minute rune coming out, potentially. Get remnanted forward and yeah, arcane rune bottled by Supreme and now no one are left stranded. Shackles onto top. Weaver gonna get speared up to the tree. No Shikuchi for another six seconds, and that's gonna be a beautiful little set up and kill by VP. It's very important that Mars is getting farm here and the levels. Once you have arena, you should be able to just kill Weaver every single time. So Zayats should stay away from the XP and leave experience to Mars to get that level 6 faster. Like all of these lanes, everyone's kind of just waiting and biding their time for the first big items, especially NIP. Wanting that Necro book. Enigma, which isn't too far away. 
Shackles again onto Suneko. Charlie's gonna come in and chase down Zayas though with open wounds. They force the TP. Very nicely done. Shadow Shaman's out of there. That's what one way and another to give him solo XP TP out. I wonder how much gold both sides have spent on sentries though. It's like the, the sixth or seventh sentry we've seen in this top lane. Everyone trading them out as Weaver needs to keep that vision limited from VP so he can keep Shikuchiing around. And Rezo just got level 6. With Soul Ring, you have enough mana to use the combo. And Soniko keeps pulling the lane back on the top, stealing as much as he can. Shackles mid. Amber Spirit got a remnant off, and it looks like he'll be in time to get back to his tier 1. Zayat's first rotation. Trying to give no one a little bit more momentum there. I'm going to salve him up on his way through. As the 8 minute rune contested top by Suneko. Dyer's middle the swarm of the Zayats, but he just wants to try and grab that, and it's invis rune for him. Radiant's bottom Era. tower is under attack. And Morphling is such Dyer's a stupid hero, top. man. You feel like, okay, he's sitting at 30% uh, HP. Maybe I could kill him. Then he starts hitting you three times every second, and then you need to back off. And then he heals up by like 600 HP out of nowhere, and you realize your battery assault did nothing. Full Tranquil Boots here for Sableite. ILTW moving in towards Phase. He could get himself bottle on the Void Spirit. Much action down there. It really just has been LIP securing their farm as the Morphling being scouted out by Suneko. <laughs> no one pings him. He's like, guys, there's a bug here. How do we get rid of it? It's a sneaky play. You want to try to kill Morphling when he shifted everything. And you know he's going to be playing on low HP. Someone could TP mid. Someone needs to die from Virtus Pro to TP mid and reveal Morphling's bottle. That's the plan Looking here. Look at you, Solo. <laughs> Solo, go dive in and die. Looks like they're trying to pick off this Enigma. Trying to, again, shut down that Saberlight timing around the Necro. But helping him out, they know where he's lurking around. Black Hole ready for Sableye though, could be an opening for NIP to TP and defend around the Enigma, but they've got the Shackles controlling up Sableye and bringing him down before they get that chance to react. You, you can see how quickly Suneko TP reacted there. Good Chainstones from VP. And Lacoste, again, we're looking at this scenario where NIP have two supports, you know, level 3, level 4, sharing a lot of experience, uh, sorry, kind of not sharing a lot of experience with their offlaners, giving a lot to their cause, while VP are closing in on sixes. A resolution is almost level eight here. Rina still not used, but if he decides to make a rotation, it should result in at least one kill. But so, for now on, he'll just be farming. Other lanes are going well for Virtus Pro. No one 77. CS on top of net worth. You really just don't kill Morphling right now. That will be his primarily target in team fights for the next 10 minutes. That's very interesting. Bottom lane, LTW in a bit of trouble though, playing with the catapult timing. Enigma, this should be a free Roche. I mean, Roche, what am I saying? Enigma, nice trap. And they've got the shackles from the right hand side, and that's it. Enigma's down. Somehow, Solo's still surviving. As I'm back in the server, thankfully, we've got the observer that I can watch. Solo does finally drop. Can they get the chains in here? Supreme? No. No chains still. No points in chain. That's one way to play against the Morphling. Just don't get them at all so he can't turn into you. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. And use it against you. I do get the tower in the end as well. So Saberlight trading his life Dyer's for Solo. As well as a tier 1 tower there being picked up by the Ember Spirit. So Spirit Vessel now just a recipe away. Morphling might need to adjust his item build when he sees that Spirit Vessel. Like, you want to go for Manta style, but no one committing heavily, just buying Ghost Scepter. Goes for. 
resolution. Giving Charlie the clicks. That's an armored rush lifestealer, though, who turns the fight. But look at where Zayas is standing. Hex up onto Suneko. Dogs rebuke, but no shackles. That's not wanting to keep that flame going. Resolution, thinking about using. Welcome back, Gary. Interesting. I bet we were both talking at the same time for the stream. <laughs> I, I was I was still here. The Discord lagged or something. I don't know what's happening, man. Where are we, Lacoste? Three two score. Thirteen minutes in. I want to see some action, some full Davai. A trying top with that Mars ulti. A bit of blood there with a good spear, trapping them both inside the cog. So Charlie and Hera unable to give chase, and they've taken down Suneko. No one's rotation with the haste. He's got Bakker Assault going and a clockwork. Having his tools used against him feels pretty bad. They're also diving for Charlie. Serpent Wolves to try and focus the tier one and the creep wave as Charlie rage TPs. Nothing to stop him there. But VP focusing on the objective instead. No abilities that go through magic immunity, so that they will have an issue with that one. So far, Charlie didn't die a single time, but his net worth is not the greatest. 4,000. I mean, same goes for LTWs, both safe laners. Kind of got shut down in the laning stage, even though ILTW had a harder lane, I would say, against Enigma. Heading into full scepter, then towards Agonims. Void Spirit. Era, the level 5, 14 minutes in. Two level 5 supports. They do jump onto resolution with uh, level 1 searing chains. Should be able to pick off the Mars here with the help of the clockwork, trapping him in the cogs. No reaction from BP, nothing really to get them up towards the top lane. And also solo mid, having to dive away from Charlie's rotation as NIP looks to mount a defense of their mid tier 1. No one can't afford to play super aggressive right now. There's a full spirit vessel on Supreme, and uh, here they come. They want to kill him. Vesting into the Ember Spirit. Dire Observer Ward near that Mud Golem camp. I think it's scouted out solo, but they are going to go in on towards no one. Shikuchi forward. Yes. No one sitting at 700 HP. Spirit Vessel, and now the way form away with the TP. There's no more stuns. So good from no one. After the chains were expended, there was nothing. Clockwork had hookshot ready. I mean, you can even try to use it on your own teammates. Just to stun him up. And Saberlight, we were praising him, but in both of these games, it just doesn't Radiant's feel like that's his hero. And now he's walked into potential death. Supernova coming out from Solo to zone back MIP and the Dissimil with the spear, nearly taking Suneko down as well. The backstab from NIP, Era and Charlie are looking for a hook shot and they will catch the Phoenix. He does have a dive, but he doesn't get too far away. Battery's not going to stop him in midair. And Era down on the Phoenix. Deny, no, try to deny himself to neutrals, but here was there with the final touch as the Arena of Blood from Resolution looking to zone out Charlie. We talked about Phoenix Dyer's using oh. Supernova Charlie preemptively to stop the, any kind of black hole attempt, and that's what Solo did. I mean, sometimes if it sounds stupid, it might work. <laughs> yeah, he knew he had that high ground advantage. Either you force NIP to take a bad fight, or you force them away, and then you've got these gap close heroes. That Void Spirit. Thing and Phoenix. Takes to four. Slight lead for VP, but here comes some big items. Blink Dagger up for the Mars now. 50 seconds for his ulti. Serpent Wolves ready for Shadow Shaman. Catapult Wave coming in top Radiant as well. Are scanning. Bream spots out no one. They also infest the clockwork. NIP want to try and force a fight. Resolution. Gonna no, just, just getting hookshot. Side step the hookshot. Aero yeah, launches it into midair. Whiffs completely. NIP still chasing into this radiant jungle though. Two man chains with a sleight of fist. Vested clockwork. Life still are not going to jump out of him just yet. 
And Enigma did also come in here to try and defend mid lane as no one getting in behind them. They catch out RLTW. They do finally get the pick off. That's working mechanic against Morphling, against Phoenix, Void Spirit. Supreme will need to hit those Searing Chains. It's only level one. Man, Saber Light. He, he's having a rough time in both of these games, actually. Full E Blade on Morphling. Yeah, helped out by Zyance. A lot of chain disable there with the blow up from the E Blade now ready. Resolution is going to go play up in that top lane while Solo, as you see here, just fighting away in the trees, diving away from any perceived threat. NIP needs to talk about the item build. I see both Ember and Lifestealer going for Deso. I mean, Ember Spirit can turn that into Maelstrom. Maybe even think about an early BKB. Dyer's middle tower is Had a good attack. game so far, Supreme. RTW, on the other hand, looking too great. It's in a difficult one for the Void Spirit. He's kind of the sacrificial hero in this game, it feels like. Virtus Pro are going to be really focusing to play around this no one morphling now. With their good fight combo ready. Supernova with Arena of Blood. It looks like they want to try and smoke out to pick off onto that, you know, Enigma again to relieve this pressure. Sableite to make his mark in pushing out these lanes. Not being able to join any team fights just yet. As NIP also ready themselves. Up onto high ground, looking to break any smokes arriving. Zayat gets an observer one down, but he's scouted immediately. And there's the jump. Trying to bring the Shadow Shaman down, and he's gone. Jump in, though, with the Arena of Blood. Beautiful plays. The E-Blade zapping out the clockwork. A Sineko fought the time lapse. Shikuchi's ready in a second, but he's blown up. Virtus Pro, the execution yet again, paying off as the Supernova lands. Dealing with the Ember Spirit, who remnants away. Can we get any more cash? There's Resolution with a clumsy net. Catching him out onto the black, the black hole. Sableye onto three, and Charlie ripped away at VP. Morphling's still up and running, though, and he's got an E-Blade if he wants to try and turn and fight this one. But a three for three. Very even fight as everyone throws every single ability they had into the mix. Enigma with a very nice black hole turnaround. I'm, I'm happy that he's getting a BKB straight after a Blink Dagger, and that Philosopher's Stone is gonna help him out. You know, Enigma doesn't really rely on dealing any right-click damage, so he's fine with uh, just keeping that one. There's no saving items, no saving heroes on Virtus Pro, so if Lifestealer just gets on top of someone, that hero dies. They've got to be so careful with how they're positioning these team fights. It's top lane, Zayat, hook shot it up. Seneco was the one to get caught initially. But Aero might be trapped inside the Serpent Wars now. There's an Aether Remnant to hold him in for a little longer, and RTW giving chase. Swapping out your position fours. As long as Morphling is not dying, it's everything's worth for Virtus Pro. Here's the ultimate carry from the mid lane. LTW is just playing utility. Yule Scepter for setting things up and the double damage on Morphling. What a great uh, rune that he picked up. 500 damage per hit. Hit 1.25. Okay, 0.40 per second. Okay, that's uh, very good. I mean, Roche almost there's an arena with a supernova though. Lacoste blown up supreme. The infested Ember Spirit trying to poke into Roshan and Virtus Pro, five heroes strong, obliterate them. So Morphling will have Aegis. That means that he can farm freely his next item. Doesn't care too much about that spirit vessel. And I play, I know P playing very spread across the map. Sable is down bottom, waiting for his black hole to come off cooldown. Neko and Aero both closing in on that area too. Radiant's bottom tower is Gucci, under attack. Just trying to scout out, get a D ward going. The TP from Lifestealer bottom looks like NIP really want to set up for something here. 
Morphling he has TP. He can come down to the tier two. Solo's gonna try and clear out Eidolons, but there's the hook shot. Thanks to the Midnight Pulse opening up the tree line. Dive in a second. He's got 14 one charges, but doesn't even bother. Knew he was likely dead regardless of what happens. Radiant are scanning. Still very limited on the tower damage until Lifestealer gets that Deso, and they finally talk this through. They played Rock, Paper, Scissors. Ember Spirit lost. He's going for BKB instead of Deso that he wanted to. But he definitely needs a defensive item for himself. Bottom tower is under attack. It absolutely does. Bottom tower is under attack. Plenty of struggles up against this blink shadow shaman. Catch you with the hex. The Deso done for life stealer. Daneko chases resolution back behind the tier two. VP smoking with both supports. They want to try and make NIP pay for this. The committal onto the tier two tower bottom lane. But Morphling is up. farming the, the whole top part of the map. Taking the tower. This is where the difference comes from. NIP needs to group up, go together if they want to take a team fight. While Verse Pro is just like, eh, we don't care. I'm farming on this Morphling, getting my Manta style done. The rest of the team can play together. We're going to take over the outpost so I have a place to TP to, and then we can still take a fight. Yeah, and it's giving room to RTW to catch up as well. And you're working very quickly now towards the Aghanim Scepter. While NIP, the top net worth hero, was the Enigma for quite some time. DKB a thousand gold away. And it's a lot of time wasted. Lifestealer's just inside the clockwork for a very long time. He's taking the outpost. Lifestealer just chilling. But at any given moment, no one. Just gonna pop the E Blade onto Seneco. Take out one of the raindrop charges. Charlie's still in. <laughs> It must be cozy inside of uh, Era's Clockwork. Very comfortable. Rock it on. And they're trying to set up here in case VP come and defend this tier on top. You know, you see the Enigma pushing there. Kind of expect someone to come and deal with it, but VP very happy just to trade out. They're getting tier one bottom lane. Mid lane's being shoved in by a double damage Morphling. Bottom tower has fallen. Sunray to keep him topped up, and that's a tier two just annihilated as it looks like Arena of Blood. Tried to catch out the Seneco Weaver, but he's doing a great job duking away and cutting out waves. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Seneco still being chased by Resolution and ILTW. We might see. And Shikuchi has top lane. Hex, Serpent Wards, and Shackles here for the E Blade combo. No, 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 no E Blade combo. Just DD Rune. Slap him down. Now he's stuck, uses Manta style, tries to get out, but. <laughs> <laughs> Waveform. It didn't have a TP either, so that waveform. Get a bounty rune and away he goes. <laughs> NIP looks like they've stalled a little bit here. They wanted to keep that momentum going. We might see more of position 5 Weaver. Let's jump onto it. Position 5 Weaver gets the time lapse off, but hexed immediately after, and they've got the chain disables to bring him to his knees. You can easily ward, you can get more farm, like Weaver gets farm priority in this one over Clockwork for sure, and you can outpush the lanes when it's very attack. dangerous. You need to be that hero. And, and you can see, like, like, Arena, they try to kill him with that. I, I think Sona Iku doesn't care about his deaths at the moment. And then you become a saving hero as you get that Aghanim Scepter, right? You add another layer to the hero with just one item. Dreadless Pro, though, it feels like they've really taken this game by the horns. Radiant they know exactly. Enigma with a full BKB should not be underestimated. They have no ability that they can stun Enigma with. Hookshot Ages missing. will be gone in few seconds. Arena of Blood just catches three of them. The Raid Line right up the walk straight out of it as Resolution focused down. But the Supernova on the right yeah, hand side. Black hole. The Black Hole's gonna get cancelled out. The Supernova needs to be focused down. They don't get it done. So Sableye, he misses out. And the Mid Pearl still ticking them down. But no one stands its ground. Battles on through as the BKB from Ember Spirit wears out. Now back towards Zayat. He's already spent all the now a great steering change from Supreme catching out ILTW he needs to actual step down to the low ground and NIP forcing the buyback from Zayats getting the die back on that Shadow Shaman fighting on their own high ground taking the fight there's no one he's TP back home 
Void Sprite's gonna have to try and do the same thing. Oh, they don't see him. Wrong way. That's the problem that we discussed during the draft. Nothing against the Life Stealers. Rage. Zero deaths on him. Like, you can't just make a rotation. Same goes for Enigma right now. Even though it was not the greatest black hole in the history, you still catch the more. For the dead duration, you can deal with the rest of his team. And Saberlight is just chilling, you know, keeping that Philosopher's Stone, going for a refresher. He will get it eventually. And they've got three heroes that don't... Oh, nice attempt by Rezo. And I have three heroes, basically, that don't care about Arena anymore. BKB on Ember, Enigma, and they've got the Rage on Lifesteal. They just walk straight through it. Radiant Oscar. Virtus Pro now, knowing that Black Hole is down, they want to try and exploit this timing. Serpent Wards are ready. Arena of Blood is back up. But in 15 seconds, they're ready for round two and straight into the same position yet again. Life Stealer infested in the clockwork. Still just roaming around here. He's... Life Stealer, you know, still 10k net worth. He's keeping topped up. And I guess that's, you know, in, in part due to the fact that Sableite is soaking up so much of the net worth anyway. Keeping this game very close. It reminds me of the V-Play video where Spirit Breaker and Life Stealer are just chilling in the car. That's what Era and Charlie are doing right now. You got some 70s effects, some vaporwave. Chilling. Era gonna find the out here, it looks like. Very quick hook shot into Infest Bomb. E-Blade and Adaptive Strike gonna catch Era's clockwork, so they're gonna trade four for four. Position-wise, anyway. But that's, right. that's, that's time for Black Hole to come back off cooldown now. Sableye's ready yet again. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Lucian. <laughs> Does Arena around MIP, but again, they've got Rages, they've got BKBs, and Mars not able to stand his ground against that. And with Roshan potentially respawning now, it's one minute until he returns. MIP can put themselves in a great position now with a Dire Observer with scouting out Void Spirit. And also, this Morphling turning into Weaver mode and Solo's Phoenix showing themselves bot lane. Now, NIP are chasing. I thought no maybe they'd get that courier. I'm out a bit worried for Virtus Pro. Like, you have nothing that stops BKB Black Hole. He'll get good one eventually. Solo forced a super over to get away from Sableon. They get the slight chains. Supreme. The aim for Solo. He's got an Icarus dive to the north. Can't see him now, can he? Palafist will connect, and that's the end of the Phoenix. The lane. They've got shackles here onto Weaver. Zayat has spent his Serpent Wards again to try and solo kill, but that's not worthwhile in, uh, by any means. Also, I want to see a defensive item. I see Phoenix going for Lotus Orb, which is a pretty big deal, but Shadow Shaman could get. Something like a four staff to push people out of the focus. Great against Life Stealer, great against Clockwork. I don't think you can itemize against Enigma. Maybe get a basher on someone, but who? Like Mars wants to get a BKB to have ways to dispel himself against the Spirit Vessel. Spirit Vessel is the greatest item in Dota right now. Void Spirit, I guess. Void he Spirit could, Vessel yeah. Blade. Morphling now, aiming for Butterfly after the Eye of Scardi. No one is the strongest hero on the map right now. Roshan's alive. Something that Virtus Pro definitely excel at is fighting around that Roche pit. I'm a little disappointed in Zayat's Shadow Shaman. You know, four or five times he's using these Serpent Wards to try and solo kill a Weaver or, you know, place it's him down. It's not worth it. It really isn't. When really he could be, you know, pressuring tier three, moving himself onto the bottom tier two, anything apart from trying to solo kill us an Echo Weaver. Next Roche respawned. This is where you take a fight, and whoever wins it gets free Roche. How are we buyback wise? Ember, Enigma, Mars, and Weaver have one. Radiant are scanning. Radiant scan does hit onto NIP, so Virtus Pro know this is coming. 
Resolution did get spotted by the Observer Orbit. They jumped solo Phoenix straight off the bat. And your Lotus Orb's up, but he's gone. NIP. Still looking for the dive onto Void Spirit. ILCW hiding away in the trees. But with Phoenix gone for 40 seconds, this could be Roshan time. Arcane Rune for the Enigma. Oh, is it going to be Supreme? Okay, Supreme takes it. Veritas Pro still want to fight. Solo has drawn the line. Go without me, team. I will lead you even through death. Need the Remnant there, but in comes the Ember Spirit. Quick slide chains. There's no one. Battering away in the Charlie. They've got the Arena of Blood down, but the focus on to Resolution. Bringing him low as Supreme BKB, allowing him just to stand there and whack away at the Mars. The blow up in the back as the Enigma does drop, though. Virtus Pro have got their target down beautifully. As they now move on to Supreme, a slide and a Remnant down to the low ground as Charlie focused down the Shadow Shaman. Mars has brought back and no one. He rages up into lifesteal mode. The Morphling, he's being sarced up though. Manta stars it off. He's got an E play to play, but still alive somehow. No one turns the fight. Nearly blows up the Weaver, but he's been isolated. Solo needs the Sun right there, and he's going to heal up no one. He's been bought more time. They've got a Lotus Orb to play with. No one is still well. alive. Buyback. No one is still just dancing around this fight, thanks to that Essence Ring. Era brought down by Rezo and Solo, but Charlie, he's going to whack away into this Phoenix as a spear catching the Ember Spirit. Chain stuns him up with a God's Rebuke, but it's not enough physical damage. No one dies as well in the back end to Saberlight. Was that just a black hole out of Enigma? Ooh, Saberlight needs better black holes. But the... Uh, yeah, they... Wait, how did no one die? Who killed no one? Saberlight, Saberlight did. did. But Saberlight had already used black holes. That's why I was wondering what had happened there. He has no buyback. Somehow finding the biggest kill on the map. Resolution in again with the Arena of Blood. Sableye. He is very low. He did buy back earlier on, but he looks like he's just fine. Clumsy net again, and Resolution is the one that dies back. This is some clown fiesta, Gary. Stuff like this what should is not happen. Like Warp dying to Enigma in this move by Mars. A lifestealer still with zero deaths. Charlie having the perfect game. Now they're looking to claim that tier three. I'll W really been able to make an impact in this game. Void Spirit at five, three and seven, just spamming out Ether Remnants, trying to lay this push, but the Malirax is down. MP shifting focus onto the range, still another five seconds for Morbling, and this is where they'll back away. They can run into Roche, but there's no Mars for 40 seconds. They have enough damage. Deso, Swarm, Armor Reduction on Roche should be more than enough. Now Enigma, just a thousand gold away from full refresher, and he will have enough mana to cast uh, two black holes. Ah, oh, Lacoste, you need to reconnect to the call. Not Discord, but the uh, the other one, apparently. So Roshan here for NIP. Veritas Pro coming in with Solo, diving forward, and Supernova in a great position, but the instant focus from NIP, you're gonna bring it down. No one on top of Supreme, he's got a right click there with the black hole from Sableye, beautifully placed, catching both cores of VP. You are beneath me. NIP with a gorgeous, gorgeous initiation from Sableye there, catching Virtus Pro completely off guard. Yeah, we mentioned it a couple of times, even during the draft, this lifestealer with rage is uncontested. You can't kill him. There's not a single ability that goes through magic immunity. Same goes for Enigma. And uh, he's very, very close to that refresher. Now Cheese and Ages. I believe we're gonna see game three here, Gary. It looks like that's the way it's going. NIP unstoppable now. 50 more seconds without a Morphling. That's going to be another lane of barracks. Virtus Pro trying, scrambling everywhere they can to hold on to this game. Radiance top tower is under attack. Hero with a full pipe. Blink dagger being delivered to him now. More initiation abilities for NIP. Sableye very close to that refresher orb. Radiance top has but right now, items don't matter that much. They've got two lanes of barracks and they're actually focusing tier fours. Catapult's coming. Eidolon's necro units all trying to focus in onto the objectives. Three. That's 
get the chains on solo, but immediately Lotus orbs it off. They get a tier four and they infest away. If you want to end the game right now, what you could do is pop refresher on Enigma, even though it's not needed, and put it in the courier so they don't know that you have refresher. Radiant but they're just gonna back off. It's gonna be up in 40 seconds. The threat of two black holes is much better than just one. Need to risk anything. Yep. P. Gathering up to defend their bot lane. No one with two deaths in a row in these team fights. Slowed down tremendously. Have the butterfly. Or anywhere near it. This Weaver now has the Blink and the Aghanim Scepter. Save potential for Sineko. This pleases the magic. There is no counterplay to it. That's the problem. Enigma blanks in, only thing you can do is watch. That's why VP trying to spread out across this tier 2 as best they can. Simulate away, they see the TP from the Morphling coming in as he rages up. But there's Sableye with the blink, Midnight Pulse doesn't black hole. The jump out from Virtus Pro trying to kite away NIP and their BKBs. They've blown up Science in the back end of the fight and the Mars Ulti is here with the Enigma. Both well place. They've got the uh, time lapse and there's the black hole. Beautiful and GG is called They knew it was over. As soon as the black hole started, it is GG time. Yeah, man, I love that no one. He understands the game is over. He's spinning in the black hole, being sucked in. Types GG with the caps lock.
IPs turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. NIPs turn to pick. Beautiful pros turn to pick Oracle. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. A 
And they're both incredibly squishy, right? If they get jumped by Ember, you know, we could see VP go for that Storm Spirit again, get the gap closed. Just yeah, they have the back lines. They literally have no stun. A Keeper of the Light, Ulti, uh, Oracle. He can just Fortune dodge. Yeah, end, he can yeah. just dodge that. He doesn't care too much about it. And there's no burst damage, so I, I, it's a very good Storm Spirit game. <laughs> For some big Wombo combo. Still bonds with Black Hole, Virtus Pro. Wrapping up that Enigma for resolution. Midnight Pulse also super good against the Bristleback, that base damage. And like you're saying, no stuns. All they have to worry about is the Will-O-Wisp. And once Enigma gets BKB, he doesn't even Ten care about that. Remaining. You can get position far. Uh, far? What? Far? Position seconds four, remaining. who doesn't need to farm and you leave Enigma in solo scenario. So something like a Tusk, Earthshaker. Earth Spirit? Even Earth Spirit comes to my mind. Yeah, something that can make rotations to the mid lane, threaten the other lanes while Enigma is just soloing. So do you feel forced as NIP to go like Beastmaster here and keep Bristle between position one and two? Get a, get the Primal Roar, have something to deal with yes. Enigma. Yes, I believe you need to get something that pierces spell immunity. Beastmaster is just that hero. It does mean you're relying on that Roar as you know your, your primary form of lockdown. Virtus Pro's turn One cooldown. Beastmaster. There it is. I, I really want to see like Storm Fourth pick here. It just seems good. It is. Timbersaw. Whew. Okay, they are handling Bristleback and Beastmaster. This is this feels just like a straight outdraft by VP. Like three picks in, outdraft. Four picks in, dear God, ninjas in pajamas. What are you gonna do? How do you stop Timbersaw? You don't have a hero. You could put Bristleback mid, but then again, you have ten seconds remaining. No one who can make any kind of aggressive rotations. Five you, you rely on Beastmaster to carry the game for you, literally. And you don't, like, technically you don't know where the Enigma is going, right? This could be a Zayat Enigma, this could it be possibly. Resolution, or no one Timbersaw. So getting lane matchups is still not going to be easy. Virtus Pros turn to back. Like maybe if, if if VP ban Necro here, then I feel like NIP don't have a last pick hero that can like do anything. They they do ban the Storm, which I'm a big fan of. I think that was definitely a, a weak point in their draft, trying to deal with Storm and Ember Spirit again. It's all in lineup from NIP. It might not look like it, but it is. You get shut down in the laning stage, you lose the game. This is what happened in game number one. You want to be grouping. Up. Also, five I want to see uh, if that's going to be position four or five Keeper of the Light. I would give it farm priority to Keeper of the Light here. And then your Beastmaster might go for Axis build. You use Axis, lower the cooldown with Chakra. It's, uh, it's pretty strong. VP thinking about this last man. Virtus Pros turn to pick. Broodmother. Okay, that, that, that's fair enough. Get cheesed out. They would have to put the Timbersaw up against the Brood. So that feels like they want to give Rezo the Timber and they're still looking for a last pick for no one. Hmm. What about like a no one Quaspex Invoker? Ten seconds remain. Tornado EMP to, you know, set up or disengage from fights. You burn mana of Bristleback. You're very remain. good at sniping backlines with Ghost Walk, Cold Snap. I guess you, you've already got a Spirit Vessel Builder and Ember Spirit, so maybe... If they need a mid laner, I would still prefer a Queen of Pain. Over all these heroes, Storm Spirit is banned out. But that means your Enigma is position 4, which is also fine. Like, you can just farm the jungle, same concept that we suggested before. Where Enigma farms jungle, you deny the lane, you can't kill Timbersaw. You really can't. She, he's gonna get early levels, and Enigma will farm items in the jungle. Yeah, like Timbersaw okay. able to be out there pressuring the map. Everyone else given a bit of free space to farm. NIP's turn to pick. Last pick for VP is Sniper. Okay. There's no, no gap, gap closers. closers. Yeah. Like, what, what do you pick? Like a Spectre or something? 
<laughs> BA, maybe? Ten seconds remain. Again, it just leaves you so light on stuns, lockdown. Well, it's troll, probably, huh? Uh, th that's their combination. Oracle, but it's a very greedy lineup from NIP, no matter what. Still have 50 seconds. Still some think. Hmm. They're gonna have to dig deep for this one. You know, you've got last pick and you you, you really gotta be feeling three or four picks in that uh, lost a lot of hope in this draft. Their, their lanes still do look pretty good, you know, Cossel Bristle. It's gonna be Cossel Beastmaster then Oracle Bristle. Or, or do you try lane? Do you try and force the Beastmaster into a solo lane? I guess that is an option. I just don't see which hero Temporary is a game-winning hero here. Heroes. Grab the Saberlight TA. So it, 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 Zayat's Enigma, everything all lined up there for VP, immediately picking their heroes. They knew what they wanted to do. Ninjas in Pajamas, they've got uh, some thinking to go through. Where do we want to set up these lanes? Not not really feeling Templar Assassin against Sniper. No one might also get Necrobook 1, as he did a couple of days ago when he played Sniper. Yeah, well, you got... Oh, is it 25% cooldown reduction or is it 20%? I think it's even lower now. Oh, the 20% reduction on it. That's not a number I've got in my head. 15% level 10 talent. It got nerfed. Still pretty good as your first talent for Necrobook or Hand of Midas as it used to be. Sniper. So there we have it. It is in pajamas with a TA last pick. Beast Master, Bristleback, Oracle, and Keeper of the Light. VP, some massive wombo combo for team fight. Great gap closing abilities. They were thinking this through. Like who is playing which lane? So Oracle will be the one on the bottom. Removing Ember Spirit's shield and Vorlock's Fatal Bonds plus a heal. Now you can dispel a lot of things with Oracle this game. Problem is you have no Spirit Vessel Carrier. And I don't think you can make... I mean Oracle can try to buy one. Depends how much farm he gets. I just feel like NIP, they've got to like five man smoke into the jungle, find kills at level one, try and get their lanes off to you know, a snowbally start. Game three here. Virtus Pro versus Ninjas in Pajamas. Yeah, good guy. Dota 2 did not want to show Beastmaster perform a performance in the last game. Instead, it showed different stats. Hiding it. A bit hidden. So Era Oracle going up towards top. Beastmaster for Saberlight will be heading there as well as they've got the Keeper of the Light and Charlie Bristle in that bottom lane. Supreme for Assassin. Mid lane against no one sniper. Zayat's Enigma with the Rezo Timber. Ready with a, the sentry there on the Timber. See what he does with that. And ILDW solo. Ember Warlock. Top spot. Like you said, they want the Oracle to match up against Warlock. You've got Fortune's End to dispel off Fatal Bonds or Shadow Word. What is the flock, amigos? <laughs> amigos. Stable light. Bit of morale boost. 30 seconds to battle. Is early aggression from Seneco. Look at this. Given the clicks to resolution, he's not leveled anything up yet on the Timber Saw. He won't be regening off the back of reactive armor. And that Blightstone as his first item on Keeper of the Light gonna help Charlie do a bit more damage. The battle begins. Runes. Being grabbed up. Star observer. Watching for that rotation, bottom to mid lane. 
those runes. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, you're not really thinking about Oracle trying to snipe you, Keeper of the Light. You don't care about these heroes. But a sneaky little play from NIP. They want to get kill on Timbersaw straight away. Era just hiding in the trees. He does pick up his reactive armor though. He knows. Zayats. Yeah, no one's showing top lane. Saberlight bonded up to the creep wave. The HP gone as Era forced the TP. 5 0 start for the Templar Assassin, though. Because I am. Ha! So, some really good sideways splashes onto no one. Look at this. He's closing in on a potential kill here as well. If he can get a little bit more, one hit away, but Supreme not committing. Even with the fraction up, and now no one with the salve. He's going to be forcing Supreme to take quite a bit of creep damage. He's trapped here. Supreme, he's been outplayed by no one. The refraction's gonna be forced. He's under the shrapnel. This is no one getting first blood. One hit, that's all it'll take. The fairy fire, all oh, bites a little bit of time now. Two hits. Flask, it's is he gonna, gonna use it? I don't think it's used. worth it. Oh, the missile Miss kill. <laughs> no one was so close, but still, Supreme will deny himself to neutrals, return to lane, but he's gone for 20 seconds, Lacoste. 20 freaking seconds. It's still worth it for no one. Like, he is 10 0, Templar Assassin missing out. The whole creep wave, no one will get some denies. Free farm on the mid lane. Even though he used three shrapnel charges. For a second, I thought no one might disconnect. Like, <laughs> GG, I'm out. You know, I missed the uphill. It's it's very tilting. Uh, you know, you could hear it in my laugh. But it wasn't actually a laugh. I, I felt that pain for no one. That, that awkward, painful laugh you have when you're yeah. like, Oh, I'm so screwed here. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. And tears of joy and laughter of pain. The two emotions. The sniper 14-3. Cracking start for no one after nearly dying himself. Era in that jungle gonna get found out by Solo. Puts him away as Zayat's jungling. For Enigma. Reso going for a courier. Just kidding, getting out. Actually threatened fakes the TP. <laughs> and then cuts the wave. At the same time, Sableite was doing a great job harassing back on RTW while their new solo was missing. There is Rezo just stuck in the creep wave. Seneco trying to pull. Rezo says absolutely not. Charlie drags like a wave and a half across. Try and connect them in there as mid lane again. A very close battle. Supreme coming back a little bit, 13 and 3 now on the TA. A 1. He knows Refraction's down, so he's pumping as much damage as he can into the Temple of Assassin. He's playing Melee Sniper. No points in take aim yet. On the top lane, Ember Spirit doesn't even get. Radiance Flame Guard, it could easily just get purged, so it's much better to have the other spells. Uh, Charlie just missed out on like two and maybe a third lane of creeps. He's come to try and catch resolution. Uh, Soneiko will hold it and then he TPs back. Yeah, I mean, you need to TP back. Yeah, but I mean, like Charlie missed at least four or five creeps there as, you know, two died to the tier two bottom and then a couple died to the tier one does finally come on TP back as Resolution now level 4 and 3 quarters. 900 gold on that timber. Having a beautiful time. Seneco does gather up a couple of waves here for Charlie. Very awkward manipulation of creep wave bottom though. And I feel struggling to deal with that timber saw who is all alone. Like, Rezo is 1v2ing here while Zayat's completely free farming. He's mindlessly hitting jungle creeps. That's the whole point of picking Enigma. Either... She gets the farm on the bottom lane, or you swap Enigma to position 4 and have self-sustainable offlaner, which Timbersaw is. Low era level 3 has the 2 points in Purifying Flames. Might be able to kill off Solo, but held that level 2 Shadow Word for after the fortunes end and had stick charges. Will be able to walk away. And go grabbing one of the bounties down bottom. The full soul ring now. I'm going to go back to cutting waves, it looks like.
Again a game with no kills five minutes in. Very quiet start in terms of kills. And with Supreme dying to those neutral creeps. Making a play onto the wall up top. Another purifying flames, not enough. Solo again with that stick. They're able to scrape away with a tiny bit of HP. He bought the raindrop just to mitigate some of the damage. Oh, no kills yet, six minutes in. No one, you need to do something. Let's go, I'm putting my trust in you. Something, anything. Arcane room down bottom. Guarded by the Cottle, picked up by Supreme Double Wraith Band on this Temple Assassin and refilled that mana. Chakra magic. Master Ember Spirit pretty much in a straight 1v1. Much appreciated. Very close in after all last hits, but more denied for the Beastmaster there. Oracle is an Observer Ward and keeps tabs on Zayats. Level 6 Enigma and Helm of the Dominator about to come. Pre 7 minutes. Good timing. You can't contest Enigma with these two supports. They're more counter reactive. You don't want to use Will O Wisp offensively. It's more counter initiation. Same goes for Oracle. So Beastmaster should be the one creating space for NIP. Sniper mid lane. Oh, he tries to turn for the headshot, but first blood is stole by Supreme. They give him the tips. That's he was baiting, swing. but Enigma was not close. They wanted to try to bait with Sniper, put the black hole on Templar Assassin. No smoke whatsoever used by Enigma. How long ago was it when this Enigma was buying Helm of the Dominator and getting catapults? What, was that a year ago? <laughs> it doesn't feel that long ago. Roar up top. ILTW. Focus down by the two supports of NIP. And there's the finish, bringing him down. Focusing on the solo now as well. It's safe, like a TP home. The Shadow Word taking him down, but he's making his way safe and sound into the fountain. As Zayat's rotation was, again, just too long winded. Now he needs to make a move. On the mid lane, smoke running out. Let's see how no one plays this one out. Radiance bottom. Got a centaur to try and stomp up Supreme, but they see the Enigma coming. Slows from the shrapnels and the centaur. Deny that invis. Yep. TA. Rid of the rune. Supreme here with a mel. They got a sentry. There we go. Solo, the Boy Scout. Always be prepared. Tried to hide. She tried to run. Can't do either of them. A resolution farming silently on the bottom lane. How's he doing? Top of net worth. Level 8 already. Like, you don't need to buy a hood this game. A very weird game where your timber cell doesn't need to go for it. So you could just get get some armor by team fighting items. Everything pretty much physical damage here from NIP. Kevin's Halberd is going to be of a great value this game. Oh, it sure is. So this is the period of the game where the TA uh, dips back into the jungle to try and race towards the Desolator. Get that timing. Sabolite, that Helm Rush. And has got himself a Centaur. Play around that top lane. as these two supports from NIP. And we, we looked at this draft and we thought... Mm. Not going to be able to do great things with Cottle and Oracle. So far, they've been making it work for themselves. Hand of Midas on no one. Like, it's only Sniper and Ogre sometimes buying Hand of Arc Midas. Arc nah. nah. It's a nah. Dead, dead item for him. Bad. Bristleback going to take out some ancient stacks. But now a soul ring and a clarity regen up that mana as bounty runes spawn up. 
Fatal Bond into the top lane as the roar on Enigma catches Zayat and he's burst down immediately thanks to Era. Well, RCW is going to Remnant back. He's slowed so much that Remnant's incredibly, Radiant's incredibly slow. But yet another great pick off there from NIP, gathering up, making sure they find the pick they need. And VP, like they look strong on paper, but they like they're, they're playing as if they're stronger than they really Dyer's are. Has been killed. This is the third courier that died for Virtus Pro. Dial Team W is not having that game. There's no Storm Spirit like in the first one. Sniper is just a hero that wants to farm up. He's barely making any rotations. Solo again, these boars making his life a living hell. Destroyed as he tries to TP. Level 3 Purifying Flames, a nice little nuke era. Era still not buying anything, just got level 6. I would love to see Spirit Vessel being bought by Oracle. Great synergy between your ulti, also against Timbersaw. Still saving the money. There it is. 11 minute Hand of Midas and Sniper with the cooldown reduction talent about to kick in. Good timing. So Timbersaw comes and plants himself in front of the tier 1 top. Beastmaster does the same thing down bottom. No objectives being claimed yet by either side. But a nice part of the jungle here carved out for the TA. Now 900 away from the Desolator. Charlie Vanguard with Treads, incredibly tanky. They'll start to want to play around this Bristleback a little more. But I believe I saw Timbersaw going here. Yeah, Vanguard, yeah, probably Crimson Guard. It's a correct play against all this physical damage. You can build the Auras, Crimson, Guardian Greaves, Hellbird, should be fine. Virtus Pro wants to take a fight, problem is you can't really just start it. So one way to start it is just group around top tower. in front of their towers, try to take it by force. Timber's cutting wave top. Up there that tower and the rotation in mid from Nako and Era. No one playing very safely back towards the jungle camps. Radiant's top tower is under attack. D Ward from Deneco gives away their position. No one immediately sprinting. Well, he's sprinting, he's a sniper. He's been waddling away. Little penguin boy. He's got tiny little legs. And there's a roar into mid though. Timbersaw. Thank you. He has 24 stacks already. And the golems drop. There's a nice full of wisp for the fatal bombs coming out. And Zayas trying to find a position for the black hole, but they need to take down uh, Willow Wisp. To give chase as Ember Spirit remnants towards the Beastmaster. He can do it if he wants to, as Sableye's still alive. He'll like purifying flames. They found Suneko and Solo with a double kill. The Fatal Bond's doing wonders in a black hole in the very edge of the range, cancelled out by Zayat at the last second for some reason, but he'll get the bristle back regardless. Three quick and easy kills there from VP as they held their ultimates. They definitely did not have to use Black Hole there and he even cancelled it for a, a second. Timbersaw, nice play from Resolution, building up the stacks before he TP'd. At, at LTW TP's him, I mean tips him for that. So, can they get the tier 1 off the back of it solo? I mean, how much gold did he get from that fight, honestly? Two kills, a tower kill as well. Enough to buy boots. Beautiful. And he'll get a D-Ward as well. It's a great little turn of play by Virtus Pro. Roshan, though, for NIP as they move into the pit. Deso being delivered now onto Supreme. Resolution scouts them out, though. Gets stacked the reactive on him. No way to stop him from maneuvering the fight, though. Fortune's End is like the only stun they've got. Maybe they can roll him in a sec. He can uh, solo upheaval. Tries to kite back NIP and Ember Spirit remnants up to the high ground. As Virtus Pro dragging out a fight near this Roche pit. Got no black hole for two minutes. Timbersaw straight back in onto Zaneko, gets the kill on the Cottle, and now NIP kind of in disarray. Do we do we fight? Do we stand and battle in the Roche pit or do we run and hide? Looks you have like no sustain. There's Fatal Bond, Slide of Fist, Shrapnel Charges, Timbersaw will be going in, so that's a very Weird decision making from NIP to try to take Roche before taking a fight. Sniper in trouble. There's also trap. 100 movement speed. Target practice. Enough. Arcane run on the Ember Spirit. Allowing him to spam these slight chains out. 
Fortune's End. We'll connect on to him. He is perfectly fine with the backing of Warlock. Triple bounty runes for Virtus Pro. Radiant are scanning. Fill that bottle for RTW who's working towards the Maelstrom. So does that mean no spirit vessel here? For the dire team? Yeah, Enigma's working on Greaves. Timbersaw has the Halberd queued up. Did he not finish off Crimson? Just Halberd, uh, sorry, just Vanguard is a little casual item there. Sunenko getting blown up by RTW. The best chance that you get plus a disarm against the TA. If TA doesn't hit anyone, they have no burst damage to bring people down. Black hole ready in 30, rock is ready. Imagine Shrapno plus maxed up evil inside no the midnight anything. pulse. Yeah, it, it's just straight up pure damage. Okay, it's not pure damage anymore. Never mind, I'm dumb. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to think of the changes that were in Dota for way too long. Yeah, I mean, it, it used to be universal damage, if you think back even further. Space One damage. Of the days. I mean, remember when Wild Axes and Edict used to be mixed damage, physical yes. and magical? Yeah. March of the Machines used to be universal damage with Midnight Pulse, like magic damage that goes through magic immunity. They made everything so much simpler now. Yeah, it's very simple. You have magic immunity, but there are certain spells that go and or don't go through magic immunity. Now at least we know. Smoke from NIP, wrapping around onto Zayat. Smoke pops and they don't see the enigma. Zayat is going to walk himself into the trees. Potentially just got a free TP away. The rest of VP, oh, they're coming in to fight this. Zayat has been spotted. He's got a black hole ready. He's going to get roared up. No, he's not. They got a black hole for the Beastmaster. The stun is not coming. Now the focus onto the Timbersaw, but the golden drop. There's the fatal bomb spilling damage back onto NIP and a nice little save there onto Oracle through the assassinate. Thanks for the fake edict. But the focus from Virtus Pro is on the Beastmaster Oracle. They have dropped. And Solo's at Heal's going to still charge <laughs> down. So no one can just keep clicking him down. The Siri chains and then comes the Chakra. Resolution with a triple kill. Rezo. Tank, tanking up in the middle of all that while no one just stands his ground and A clicks on the ground. If they use Beastmaster Roar on the target, they grab a kill, what do you do next? You have Slow coming up from Bristleback and Boar. That's it. It's very hard. I, that's why I talked about these two supports. Suneko? He's dead. Yeah, that's level 2 ulti from downtown. That's the Centaur Stomp, mid-blinding light pushback, actually caught him out there. And once again, Virtus Pro is messing up with NIP's timing, not allowing them to get the Roche. Bristle, uh, where's, where's Bristleback's farm? He was having a free lane, farming both lane and the jungle. Now he has just a Vanguard and Power Dreads. Really slipping. Harley Bristle back. Unable to really get any kills or stick on a target in these fights. Timbersaur is just straight down his throat every time he sees him. Resolution. And the Midas use it, no one. If only he could see that walk. Now we've got Radiant's Dragon Lance Maelstrom on the sniper. Top of that hand of Midas. Dyer's top tower. Is under under you. Bring out on that midway. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Still not, oh, there we go. That's like 25 Radiance seconds. Dyer's not using hate of Midas. Is under attack. Fatal bombs onto the bristle top and Seneco focused by RTW. Now you have two Don't position five heroes Dyer's on NIP. Has been killed. If you compare, yeah, if you compare them, what Vorlock and the Enigma bring to a team fight? I mean, White Hole against the Black Hole. That's still pick Black Hole anytime. Oh, to help you chasing Era behind tier two. It's just a, a better spell, you know. Pure damage. Radiance top tower. And you can't kill it. You can't. Yeah, Ex exactly. You can't, you can't just focus it down in these fights. 
Sniper, super good at killing off that Will-O-Wisp from Kotal. Vertus Pro now, the ones that kind of take control of that Roshan area. IP trying to get out across this bottom part of the map to take a tier one. Low smoking with his squad. Don't have vision down in the bottom half of the map. Raven trying to scan and figure out where VP are. Resolution. Thinking about keeping bottom probably here. Tier 1 has already dropped as the rest of VP maneuvering into position to start the fight as ILTW rams straight up to the Beastmaster. So extended roar, but save lies down. It's just falling apart for NIP. This is what we call not playing to win. And you don't have the draft to do it. You're just counter-reacting to what Virtus Pro is doing hoping that you get something out of it, but you have no aggressive plays available at the moment. EP running the entire map. Full control. Crimson Guard, Halberd. Uh, Resolution's looking for a Kaya next. Probably that Bloodstone being up by the Timbersaw. Vambrace on top of it. And Strength Vambrace. We're gonna spot out Era. ILTW coming in behind. Both the Radiant support just trying to buy space for the TA, and that's gonna be Era giving his life. To allow Supreme to move closer to that BKB on top of the Blink Deso that she already has. The Nako being pinged out here by VP. Just trying to sneakily cut waves, try and open this map up a little bit more. But in comes RTW. I've seen this already five or six times. Keeper of the light just dying on a different side of the map. Okay, they're not gonna get him this time. The mech TP, the mech, yeah. they might everything. not get Keeper of the Light, but they will get Roshan. If you had Spirit Vessel there on the Ember Spirit, maybe you get that kill, honestly. That is Roshan now, so no one should be grabbing up Aegis. I've been pretty untouched this game. In the team fights, anyway, there's that one little dive mid from the TA that got that kill, but after that, it has been the no one show. 12,500 net worth. The light. Less than 7,000. Blink Dagger is 20 gold off as he pushes down that bottom wave. And the same thing, top lane. Putting VP in a great position here for the two. Tier 2's mid and top. Forcing NIP to fight on this Radiant side of the map. Carly's sitting, he's, he's on the Tier 1 mid lane. But he's gonna get TP'd on here. RTW catching him with the chains. And Sniper will just hold that assassinate. Make sure that Charlie can't TP out. He's, he's fake pumping it like, Charlie, go on. I'm, I'm gonna assassinate you. Try and TP, I dare you. Fineco. Trying to give a bit of space for the Bristol Bank, but it is just relentless. A poor little piggy. Burnt to a crisp inside the shrapnel. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Enigma, Dyer's full guardian greaves. They're ready to take this fight. Radiant right now, NIP is just causing fortified. a little bit of issues with the split push. Virtus Pro's lineup not the best at ganking. They need Radiant's to heavily commit. So I believe they're just gonna run down the mid. Let's Dyer's bottom You wanna fight us? LTW can Dyer's TP back. And come back to Remnant. That's their counterplay to split push. Rezo doesn't have much mana to play with right now, but it doesn't feel like he cares. 3000 HP. Seemingly unkillable. 6 nil. On your Rezo Timber. On the high ground we go, and Virtus Pro looking to close out game 3. It's been a real weird, awkward series for both of these teams, but a decisive victory here. Unless some magic happens. What about after you got up their sleeve? Smoke from the left side of the map. Supreme Saber Light era, but it's going to be scouted if they move any further forward. ILTW and no one both ready for the backstab coming. Resolution still frontlining there as the backdoor regen cancelled out by this new creep wave. Tempo Assassin, Supreme, Smoke breaks. Still has that blink BKB. They've got the roar onto ILTW, but Rezo onto Supreme, so can't really focus the target. They 
looking to try and bring the Ember down, but Slide and Force Staff with the Will of Wisp there, catching a number of VP. They're trying to bail away, but after they that, he does fall. A good pick off with the Soul of Black Hole onto Bristleback, and in comes Resolution. A buyback from Ember Spirit onto the Remnant, and they've got the chase on the TA. The big target in the back is what they'll focus on now. Supreme will fall, and with no buyback available, that is the end for MIP. The Bristle through the false promise, brought to his knees as the same boy. Beastmaster was about to be assassinated by no one, but he says, you know what, screw it. I want to kill some trolls instead. Murder Pro team fight is just much, much superior. They survived through the laning stage. And I, I can't believe people still open up with like Oracle and Keeper of the Light. And then you have a Bristleback on top of that, long cooldown on Beastmaster. When we go back to draft, it's just a clear out draft from Virtus Pro. And the, it puts you in a position where it's hard to play Dota. Yeah, it's like that. That Enigma into Timbersaw pick. Keeping things flexible, but also giving yourself these really domineering lanes. VP come in again. Top lane. Don't have their ultis, though. That is definitely something that you've got to keep in mind right now. VP don't have that full arsenal of abilities. And Sableye is going for courier snipes out on the other side of the map. But he has to TP back. This is the last chance for NIP now to hold on to their base. They can't focus Timbersaw. Resolution is way too strong. And VP have smoked in behind no one. And LQW trying to slight. Sniper. Saved up by the Oracle. <laughs> Sniper just brought Heaven's Halberd. Well, they've got the Roar. I'm gonna jump in and try to catch RTW. That is a dieback, so he's dead for 74. Sableye, though, just you know, annihilated here by no one. The Sniper just sticks around, focuses down the Beastmaster, and there is no more jump for NIP. No one has Aegis for another 30 seconds. Wouldn't mind it if he died here, honestly. Radiance top tower is under they attack. Limited on the tower damage. Heaven's Halberd on Sniper against Bristle, Radiance against TA. No one with a different Radiance item build on Sniper these days. A couple of days ago, he had Heart of Tarask and Satanic. No damage build. Just tanking up as best he can. The Willow Wisp. It's here as the Aegis expires. A pretty good timing to jump no one if they can, but Supreme. He doesn't want to go down the ramp. Resolution. Still diving behind the barracks and focusing Charlie. That's a false promise that they need from Era. As Zayats has 20 seconds still on that black hole cooldown, but he was just moving forward to try and give Greaves to his Timbersaw. As the high ground pressure continues. 10 seconds for Ember Spirit to be back up. He doesn't have a way into the fight though. When Ember is back, they will have Black Hole and Chaotic Offering. Now look at Rezo. Rezo doesn't care, they can't kill him. Absolutely can't touch him. And he's just gonna sit himself on top of that melee barracks. And here comes RFW. Virtus Pro ready to go. There's the golem to stop the TP fight. The black hole is perfect. Zayat catches everyone he needs to. The BKB from TA is meaningless in the midst of all of this. And Zayat survives with a triple kill for resolution. Virtus Pro give chase. And Nako blending line doesn't do a damn thing. And where's the rampage, baby? Resolution wants it. Stabilize, just give it to him. Give it to him. Say yes. No. Sit down. No one steals it, you bastard. How dare you? Now dive the fountain, no one. Force Staff yourself into fountain, tank some damage so you can get the rampage. I can't believe he's done this. No Not worries. enough time to get rampage. That is so very rude. NIP held back in their fountain though. And his resolution still just manning up against this side. RTW is going to hold them in with the Searing Chains and Golem going to work on the tier 4s as Virtus Pro here's the fountain dive. They kill off Seneco, no one's going to snipe out the kill. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And Charlie, where's the TP into? Elsewhere. They're running but away. Some other place. <laughs> He's backstabbing inside his own base. Charlie having a little bit of fun here, it looks like, as the TA boxing solo with the Ghost after there. And Charlie down gives that Beyond Godlike streak to Resolution 13-06. TA's BKB, yes, she's shiny, she's golden, but she's got to hide in the fountain. GG is called Virtus Pro with a 2-1 victory over NIP.
MP as they do fully commit into that fountain, but Suki is gonna survive. Will he die at the end? The false promise barely kept him alive, but there we go, series win for VP. What a performance.